everyone, it's Jen Evers with Quality Crafts, and today is Saturday. You know what that means. It's time for my besties. Today I'm going to be doing two simple, clean and simple cards they call cast cards. Clean and simple. That tends to be my style, but specifically these two cards will be very much the style. And I used two images. One is image 694, and the other one <clears throat> does not have a number, but she's called Making Faces Garden Girl. Making Faces is kind of like a a group of girls and then that's her specific name so sometimes they've got numbers and sometimes they've got names this is how you can find them if you're looking them up on her Etsy store and I've got a purple finger because I've been playing with these silks and I'm, I'm going off topic again but these are really cool there's some shimmery paints anyway I got them on sale at Hobby Lobby I do not have them on this card but if you want to try them out that's where you can get them so let's get started um, image number 694 is this cute little fairy gal that I've used before and this is a super fun card that you can find on the silhouette I'm going to warn you it's not easy to put together I always have to tweak it and it, it's tough to um, pull in and out but it's just so darling I just can't resist it sometimes and so this one makes the little fairy girl slide right across the card and then it says happy birthday isn't that fun and then I've tripled up the inside of this card it doesn't slide real well and it gets caught up which is why I don't particularly love the design of it. But um, I tripled this up because I didn't want this part to bend. Let me see if I can get that to clear up. So this is super thick because I wanted it to really pull out nicely. And it does. Super cool. So if you, if you want a tutorial on this, I can show you how I tweak it to make sure that it slides out. And then here's the second one. This is the image um, Making Faces Garden Girl. I totally love her. She was used a lot in the very first um, grouping that all of our DT, DT team did. And so I saved her for this week. I did some really teeny tiny fussy cutting um, hand stamped and colored uh, leaves on here. Added a couple of teeny tiny flowers. Glossy accented her eyes. She's so beautiful. And I didn't add much more because I wanted her to pop as the central image on there. I did add a little bit of dusty color around the edges to pull out those flowers. And then I decked out the inside of it to match with some regular pattern paper and a couple of purple flowers. So those are my two cards today. I do want to do an extra little video for those of you who love the process of showing you how I created this um, outwardly like framed type look. So if you want to stick around for that, I'd be happy to show you a little bit about how I put that together. And if not, I'll see you guys next video. This is the cut that I got from the silhouette and I've gone ahead and cut it in two different colors here. But as you can see, it cuts out the outer piece and the inner piece. So I've got two colors, again, because I cut it out twice, but this is how it looks together. You can get a lot of different looks from that. So let me get my white base card, and I'll show you how I did the card that I, that I um, showcased today. First, I took a piece of regular white cardstock, and I cut it at 5 and a half. This is a regular 8 and a half by 11 sheet of paper. I went ahead and cut it at 5 and a half, and left the long edge at 11. And then I'm going to go ahead and score it at five and a half so that the, court, the card ends up being a five and a half by a five and a half squared card. Okay, and then my piece, because I cut it on the silhouette just slightly smaller than that, will leave a nice white border. <clears throat> now this piece right here, was purple on the other card, but since it's green on this one, see I did ink the purple here. I'm going to go ahead and ink this one a darker green. And I'm going to pick, I think Old Olive would look good there. I've got a Ranger, um, or actually it's an Ink Essential, it's blending tool here. I only have one. I use a whole bin full of just, um, all this, these felt squares that I create myself and I just switch them out when I need to with different colors. I just find that to be a lot easier than buying a whole bunch of tools. So now I just slap on the felt color that I need, rub it on the ink, and then go ahead and put it right onto my paper. Now depending on the look you want, you can go darker or lighter. I'm not sure what I'll use this for, but I'll definitely save it when I'm done. Now you can see the outline is a lot darker. So 
So when I put it back on the white piece of paper here, it's going to totally pop. Do you see how, how the edges come out? Now instead of putting it directly right on here, because it takes away from all the color once you put them together, it just kind of blends all together. I went and took ahead and took my scissors here. And I cut each one of these from the corner to the tip. Now I'm going to make sure that when I do that, that I lay it down on the card so I don't forget where I'm at. So that they all match up in case my lines are crooked. So that's the bottom half. That's this side. You get what I'm saying? Because if you accidentally cut it crooked and then you put it back together, at least the sides will look like they were meant to be there. And then that one and that one. Okay, and one of these divots goes towards the top. If you have a different shape, you just want to watch for that so that you line it up when you put this down. And I go ahead and I eyeball up all of the sides to make sure that it's centrally located. I'm not real picky about exactly where it is. And then these last four, I'm going to go ahead and put some 3D foam tape on the back because I want them to stand up. And put a couple on the larger pieces that I'm going to peel off. And then I learned this trick from several other YouTubers. That if you cut a smaller piece and put it on like these little pieces that you want to stand up. So like I want this little piece to stand up so it doesn't get wrecked. But I don't necessarily want to peel all those off. You don't have to peel that off. You can go ahead and just peel these two bigger pieces off. And then that, that piece right there will not stick but it will definitely keep it up off of the paper. So then I just put it out towards the edge so that there's approximately the same amount of white space on either side and put that down. Okay, and then the same for all three. I'll do that real quickly and then I'll come back. And there you have it. And then you can pick any of your focal images that you want to put on the inside or around the card. And then it will be finished. Thanks for joining me today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you do, subscribe, share it with your friends. See you next time.